Hello and welcome to Everything Electrical Engineering. In today's video we will calculate the power flow between two voltage sources using complex numbers. We will show that the flow of real power on a transmission line is mainly controlled by the angle difference of the terminal voltage between the two voltage sources. All results will be verified using MATLAB. In this example, two ideal voltage sources are connected by a line of pins of 2 plus HA ohms. Generator 1 voltage is equal to 240 volts at a phase angle of minus 5 degrees. Generator 2 is equal to 200 volts at a phase angle of 0 degrees. In this video, I may refer to these as both generators or voltage sources, but for this example at least, it'll mean the same thing. I will be calculating the current, line loss, read and reactive power supplied or absorbed by each source before analysing the impact of the phase angle between voltage sources. First let's calculate the curve from voltage source 1 to 2 and then from 2 to 1. So the current from voltage source 1 to 2 is equal to V1 minus V2 all over Z equal to 240 at a phase angle of minus 5 degrees minus 200 at a phase angle of 0 degrees all over Z which is 2 plus 8J ohms this is equal to 5.376 the phase angle of minus 104.1 amps. Now let's calculate the current going from generator 2, generator 1. This is equal to V2 minus V1 all over Z. V2, 200, the phase angle is 0, minus 240, the phase angle of minus 5. All over Z. It's equal to 5.376 a phase angle of 75.88 amps. Now that we calculated the current, let's calculate the power next. Let's first take note of power flow for generator convention. If the real or reactive power is positive, then it generates. If it is negative, it absorbs power. So what that is saying is, if the sign is plus, then it generates. If it is negative, it absorbs power. So the power flow from generator 1 to 2 is equal to V1 times the current flowing from generator 1 to 2, but please note complex conjugate sign here, which will simply mean that we're going to change the sign of the angle of the current. So if it is plus, it becomes a, a negative, and if it is negative, it becomes a positive. Phase angle of minus 5 
Things current which we calculated to be 5.376 the phase angle of minus 104.1 now we calculated that to be minus so we're going to change it to a plus which is equal to 204 Calculate the power flow from generator 2 to generator 1. It's equal to the V2 times the current flow from generator 2 to 1. And again, complex conjugate sign. The 200 at the phase angle is 0 degrees times 5.376. Our phase angle is 75 point eight eight. Now we calculated the last thing to be 75.88 so that's going to change to a minus now this time. Which is equal to 262.5 Point two minus one thousand forty two J. And this is the read component. Watts. And this is the reactive or imaginary part bar. Next let's calculate the power loss of the line. We can calculate the real and reactive power loss of the line by adding the power flow from both the source 1 to 2 and 2 to 1 that we previously calculated. In addition, we can verify these results by I squared R and I squared X. So the power loss of the line is simply equal to flowing from generator 1 to 2 plus power flowing from generator 2 to 1 which is just calculated so this is the power flow from generator 1 to 2 and the power flow from generator 2 to 1 260 should be 2 262 minus 1000 and 42 is equal to 58 plus Two hundred and thirty J. This is the watts. This is the var. So what we can say is that the line absorbs fifty-eight watts of real power and two hundred and thirty var of reactive power. Now let's verify the real power first. This is PL. PL equals the magnitude of I squared times R equals to 58 watts minus 
the reactive power loss is equal to magnitude of I squared times X so that's 5.376 squared times 8 which equals 230 This is, a, this is far, the reactive for component. Next we will use MATLAB to verify the results that we've calculated. In figure 1 the blue and red line denote the real power flow in generator 1 and generator 2 respectively. From the graph it can be observed that generator 1 absorbs 204 watts, generator 2 generates 262 watts and the difference is consumed by the transmission line which is denoted by yellow. Now let's look a little closer at real power flow on the circuit. If we consider a transmission line of medium length for example, R is negligible compared to X. Considering this, if we allow R equals 0 and the angle of X equal 90 degrees, studying the outline mathematical equation for power flow, we can see any small change in voltage angle, 1 or 2, will result in significant increase in power flow. This is not true for voltage magnitude, thus it is the phase angle and not the magnitude that determines real power flow direction. Next, let's analyze our existing exercise but vary the phase angle of the voltage on generator 1 from plus to minus 40. Generator 2 will remain constant. We can see from figure 2 as we increase the lag and phase angle of generator 1 with respect to generator 2, the real power absorbed increases. Consequently, generator 2 generates the real power plus the power consumed by the line. If generator 1 phase angle leads generator 2, we can see the opposite would be true. Now let's take a closer look at this. Let's zoom in. If we zoom in on the phase angle at minus 20, we can see generator 2 generates approximately 2000 watts, denoted by the red line. Generator 1 absorbs approximately 1700 watts. And the difference is consumed by the line, which is approximately 300 watts. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to check out some of the other videos. If you felt like you got any value from this, please like, comment, and share.